Hey guys. Uh, so today's video is all about facial steaming. Is steaming your face actually good for your skin? Does it unclog your pores? Does it detox your body? So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Whitney Bow. I'm a board certified dermatologist in New York. And I love answering all of the questions that you guys have when it comes to the skin, both taking an inside out and an outside in approach to the skin. You might recognize me. Um, I'm often uh, contributing to programs like Good Morning America, The Rachel Ray Show, giving my expert opinion to different news outlets like the New York Times, The Wall Street Journal. And I was recently named the only dermatologist on Credo's Clean Beauty Council. So if you are interested in anything related to the skin and you wanna hear a dermatologist take, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel, comment below with any questions or topics that you want me to cover. Okay guys, so let's dive right in. So facial steamers are really popular and they have been for quite some time. Um, they're often used in a spa setting as part of a facial. Um, they're used at home. It's easy to get at home facial steaming devices. Um, so a lot of the claims uh, surrounding steaming involve uh, the steam is going to open up your pores and it's going to uh, detox your pores. It's going to help rid your pores of chemicals, toxins, oil, debris, etc. So what's the truth behind those claims? Well, first of all, guys, pores aren't doors. <laughs> they don't just like open and close, okay? And they don't open and close in response to temperature changes. Um, that's actually just not how pores work. So the way that pores work um, is that actually pores are known in the dermatology community as pilosebaceous units. So pores are like channels um, that basically uh, are like columns underneath the skin. So they open up to the skin surface and underneath the skin, they're attached to a sebaceous gland, which is an oil producing gland. And usually through the pilosebaceous unit, protrudes a hair. So, you know, when you think about the pores on your face, you may not think your face is hairy, but actually it is. Um, some people's hairs are more obvious than others, um, but we have all these tiny, tiny little hairs um, and that those hairs are associated with the pore and the pore is associated with a sebaceous gland. Now, when you get hot, when you're exercising, when you're being exposed to steam, your body responds by sweating. And what sweating does is that sweating thermoregulates your body, meaning sweating helps control your body temperature. So when you sweat and the sweat evaporates off the surface of the skin, it has a cooling effect. So it helps, you, it helps prevent you from overheating. Sweat is actually not an effective way of detoxing or getting rid of toxins. So when we think about the organs and the mechanisms in our body that help rid us of toxins, doctors focus on the kidneys and on the liver. So those organs are really designed to help rid your body of toxins. Sweat, it's a very big misconception, when you sweat, you do not actually get rid of toxins. So when you sweat, another point that I just wanted to make is that when you experience, when you're exposed to heat or steam and you sweat, that is stimulating what are called eccrine glands. It's stimulating your sweat glands. Now your sweat glands are different from your sebaceous glands. Okay, so that's a really important differentiation because I think that people think that you're flushing out your pores when you sweat but actually what's responding to the heat and the steam are your sweat glands. So yes, you're sweating, but your sweat glands are not connected to your pores. Your pores are the pilosebaceous units. Your pores are connected to your sebaceous glands. So what makes your sebaceous glands pump out more oil and sort of push all of that to the surface? Things that are going to increase sebaceous gland activity are genetics, you know, some people are just more prone to having more active sebaceous glands. Hormones can play a role in the activity of your sebaceous glands, which is why teenagers are more prone to developing either oily skin or acne prone skin. Um, even when some women go through menopause, 
um, because of those hormonal, hormonal shifts, um, their sebaceous glands start responding by pumping out more oil and they might even experience perimenopausal acne flares. Another thing that triggers sebaceous gland secretion is irritation. So if you are introducing ingredients that are irritating to your skin, or if you are not respecting the skin barrier, meaning if you are say over exfoliating, over cleansing, using too many alcohol-based toners, things that are drying and stripping your skin, that will irritate your sebaceous gland and paradoxically, your sebaceous gland will then start pumping out more oil. So a lot of my patients who have oily skin, they think that you know using these more aggressive scrubs, toners that make their skin feel tight or dry, they think that those products are drying out their skin, but in actuality, it can actually make things worse uh, because that irritation can then stimulate their sebaceous gland to pump out even more oil. Okay, so we just talked about what facial steaming is not doing. <laughs> so let's spend a few moments on what steam exposure does to the skin. Okay, so the first thing that it does is it causes something called vasodilation. So it makes your blood vessels expand so they can be constricted and then they can dilate. So that's gonna increase blood flow to the surface of the skin. Um, and it, when it's done through steam, it can be pretty sudden. Um, and that can make rosacea flare. So if you're someone who suffers from rosacea, red blotchy skin, steam can make things a lot worse. Um, actually, rosacea is one of the most underdiagnosed um, and misdiagnosed conditions out there. I have a lot of patients who thought that they had acne when indeed they actually had rosacea and they thought that steaming was good for their acne, so they were steaming their skin and their rosacea got out of control. And then, you know, when they come in the office and I explain what rosacea is and how it can be made worse by vasodilation and those people stop steaming, their rosacea, their red blotchy skin gets significantly better. So another thing that steaming can do is that it can increase inflammation. Um, so when you vasodilate the blood vessels, um, especially in that sort of very sudden way uh, as you experience when you expose your skin to steam, it can bring not only um, sort of fluid through your blood vessels into the skin, uh, but that fluid is accompanied by white blood cells and inflammatory cells and inflammatory cytokines or these little chemical signals that can actually increase and trigger inflammation. So you guys hear me talk a lot about the skin barrier and how an important skin barrier is critical to healthy skin. Well, steaming can also weaken the skin barrier. So a healthy barrier is able to trap moisture in, keep the skin hydrated, and it's able to keep pollutants, allergens, and irritants out of the skin. Pollutants, irritants, and allergens when they penetrate the skin barrier, they can trigger inflammation. So you really wanna keep that skin barrier intact because you wanna keep those things out and you wanna trap moisture in. Okay, so when your barrier is not functioning properly as what can happen when you expose yourself to steam, you uh, lose more water through your skin. So you actually end up dehydrating your skin and you allow those other ingredients to penetrate through the skin and trigger inflammation. And again, you know, inflammation is tied to so many different skin conditions. You know, inflammation is that common thread that links things like acne, rosacea, eczema, and even premature aging. It accelerates aging. So even if you don't see clinical inflammation, if there's subclinical inflammation, inflammation that's sort of, uh, you're triggering it periodically because you are exposing your skin to steam on a regular basis or for too long, um, that can cause uh, premature aging over time. Probably one of the reasons that I really hate steam, <laughs> you guys are noticing I'm not a fan of steam. Um, so one of the things that I find especially troublesome when it comes to steam is that it exacerbates um, melasma and hyperpigmentation. So in people who have melanocytes, melanocytes are pigment producing cells. In people who have melanocytes, that are especially reactive, especially sensitive, um, when those people, when their melanocytes experience um, some kind of trauma, some kind of an insult, some kind of a stimulant, the melanocytes respond by pumping out more pigment. It is well known among dermatologists that people who, with, who have melasma will get worse when exposed to heat. 
Um, we've actually seen this in environmental exposures um, when it comes to um, employment, what type of, of job you have, uh, people who cook or bake um, over ovens or over stoves uh, during the day for long periods of time, much more prone to having melasma. Um, being exposed to flames, if you're a glass blower, um, you're more prone to melasma and hyperpigmentation. So we know this, we've seen this, um, this is well studied. So if you're somebody who has especially skin of color, you know, color, uh, basically skin that if you, if you scratch the skin and it leaves, you know, a brown mark, or if you had a bug bite or an acne pimple and after that goes away, it leaves a brown stain or a brown mark that can sometimes last for weeks or months, then you know you're prone to hyperpigmentation, you know your melanocytes are especially sensitive, you are someone who uh, might experience worsening hyperpigmentation if you expose yourself to steam. Okay guys, so I really hope that that helped to clarify uh, some of the true information surrounding steaming your face. Um, so uh, let me know if there's any questions that I didn't address in this video. I am always open to answering any questions either in another video or on my social media channels um, at Dr. Whitney Bow. Um, so comment below. I'll try to respond to your comment here or I'll try to get to it in a follow-up video. All right, stay healthy and be well. Bye guys.